Cafe is undoubtedly very scary in land battles, and in this particular replay, Koops and myself had been workshopping the Skaven versus Cafe matchup, and I thought we caught on to something pretty potentially good here, uh, at least for the Skaven specifically in this matchup. So let's take a look at what he's brought. He's got Lord Skrulk as a caster lord. He's got some nice AoE damage with Rod of Corruption. Didn't even bother bringing Libra Bonicus because the damage isn't that great right now. He's got more AoE damage from Plague, Stationary Vortex, quite good right now, and additional bodies from Vermintide. Of course, Skrulk himself is an okay combatant, doesn't have much by the way of armor, but you don't really have to worry about magic missiles too much from Cathay. Uh, he's got Frenzy for giving him decent weapon strength and attack, Discourage, and magic attacks as well. Of course, uh, thinking about Skaven's power units, right, like... Uh, against Cathay and land battle, you really need to go for what's best in your faction. And I wouldn't worry too much about cheesing as long as you're within tournament rules. Really anything is fair game against Cathay and land battles. So to that effect, we've got Poison Wind Globes, by far the best unit on uh, Skaven's roster. Their damage for the cost is excellent. They've got 100 armor, giving them a, a lot more defensiveness than other you know weapons teams type units on other factions. Gorich is here. He is a pretty strong single entity. The percentage-based healing of the Packmaster should make him a little bit better as well. They can fight in tandem together uh, reasonably decent. I've also heard that his Evisceration uh, Area of Effect Vortex, I mean, if that's 120 damage per second for real, that is ridiculously broken. It's only four seconds, but I mean, let's see. I'm, I'm curious. I had Koops take it in this battle so that we can test his performance. He's also got a bunch of Rad Ogres, just generally very cost-effective right now. More anti-infantry damage coming from the Avalanche Mortar, and then just a whole bunch of chaff, obviously, to support Ixia's Triads as well for a little bit of anti-large specialist, just in case. Uh, for my own build, it's fairly standard Cathay affair, I would think. I'm not a Cathay expert by any means, but got a Lorvian caster on the Longma here. We've got uh, Sky Junk in the air, some Jade Lancers, Peasant Long Spears, and some Jade Warriors. I've got an Astromancer on the wagon for extra AoE damage. Uh, some Iron Hail Gunners for just a hair of AP, Alchemist with nothing for extra magic charge, and a Grand Cannon as well. But let's get things rolling. I'm going to move in and start to dish some AoE magic damage. Saw a nice opportunity to go after both the Triads and the Globes there, so I'm going to take that. And the Cannon is prioritized, it on, prioritized on Gorich, since um, he's a fairly high value target. To be honest, I probably should be... Uh, it's tough to say whether I should be trying to take out the Avalanche Mortars. They would be good targets as well. Here, I'm going to throw a Jade Shield to resist the damage of the Poison Wind Globes as they throw in. Uh, so they're not going to do nearly as much damage there. Even the damage over time effect does relatively little to the massive damage resistance of that spell. But you can see there, once they actually do get a little bit more of a volley, the explosion damage is really what you're looking for. Another beautiful Dragon's Breath there as we go into that Blob. Peasant Long Spears or Peasant Horseman, rather, up and around the flank there, obviously. And we've got, yeah, again, just the volleys. A minor slip in micro on these Jade Lancers leads to them taking extreme damage from the Poison Wind Globes, and that's the name of the game for these guys. The armor-piercing explosion is nice. The damage over time effect is okay. It doesn't really do all that much these days, but really the explosion damage is what you're looking for, as is the case with the Avalanche Mortars as well, coming in just savaging the Iron Hail Gunners there. Cannon this whole time has been ting off on Gorich, doing some good damage to him, but that passive healing will mean that it's not so much of an issue over time, but man, just look at those Jade Lancers get absolutely melted by uh, Poison Wind Globe Fire. Uh, very, very rough stuff for me, even despite the damage I'm doing to them. Um, yeah, Koops is going to fire up into the air here, which I think is perhaps a little bit of a mistake. He's going to be friendly firing his own troops quite a bit, and uh, these Poison Winds really should be shooting into this frontline infantry engagement to try and just win outright. Like, they probably already could have broken these Jade Warriors and Peasant Long Spears. Koops is going to throw a Plague spell there in the front line. I'm going to try and pull away from that if I can, but uh, the Globes kind of focusing, again, on, on my Flying Lord up in the air is really ultimately going to be a mistake. We'll see if it actually ends up costing in the game, but uh, the Iron Hails, or sorry, the cannon finally firing into Avalanche Mortars, which to be honest, I probably should have the entire time. Again, although Gorich is technically more expensive, I mean, I, I think those were literally just overshots on Gorich, actually. You know, in hindsight, I can actually kill the models of the Avalanche Mortars, which will lessen their stopping power. I mean, I guess I can give Gorich wounds, which isn't really going to make that much of a difference at the end of the day, but we'll see. Globes continuing to fire up into the air. 
High infantry are going to push through as a result after they've broken up the clan rats and scaven slaves in the front line. Uh, Skrulk has taken relatively little damage himself, though, and I've also completely forgotten about my peasant horsemen out there on the flank. We're going to activate them very shortly. Chase some routing units. Sky junk in the air has also just been firing away, not really doing a lot, but oh man. Great pull by Koops there to reposition and pull my peasant long spears into my own comet. Very brutal stuff. Likewise, the Dragon Blood Lord lands to try and route the Avalanche Mortars, but uh, almost gets caught on the ground. Jade Shield and some Run to the Hills manages to <laughs> get her to escape there. Very tattered. Jade Lancers manage to come back and finish off the e Eshin Triads there, the Ixia's Triads even. And another Dragon Breath to try and finish out the Poison Wind Globeteers, so. Things are looking pretty good. I'm fairly comfortable with where we're at right now, but very sneaky by Koops. He's able to get some Skaven Slaves up and around into the cannon crew when I'm not paying attention. Iron Hails and Peasant Long Spears just, yeah, just not doing what they should be. Another Plague Spell unleashed there to deal with those Jade Warriors. Does a little bit more damage. And uh, Gorich is just about down, but uh, you know, Koops and I are in voice chat, and since the goal of this game is to help Koops improve, I'm telling him, like, hey... You know, Gorich should probably go fight with the Packmaster because he's getting really low on HP. And if I'm able to finish him off with a cannon, that will be a problem. I could potentially clean up. I'm a little bit ahead on the balance of power here. Got these peasant longs, uh, peasant horsemen rather, now in a position and actively chasing routing units. But uh, the avalanche mortars not being shut down is definitely a big problem. We're going to try and pressure them some more with the sky junk there. But uh, the, the healing box now. And there's the evisceration. I mean, he wasn't really in that big of a blob. I haven't really seen Gorich use it on, like, a huge blob all at once. But he did tear out away those peasant horsemen. So I guess it's enough right now. But uh, certainly Gorich is in a very risky position. Uh, Skrulk, though, maybe not so much. I mean, the shooting gun lord could cycle charge him over time. Or perhaps in the late game, you know, 2v1 with, like, the alchemist or something. They all do magic damage. In fact, I think all Cathayan casters... All Cathayan characters except for the Magistrate deal magic damage in melee, I want to say. But anyway, Gaven Slaves actually do manage to rout the Grand Cannon crew, which is a little bit of a disaster for me. But there you go. I'm going to form up with these Iron Hail Gunners. Um, Koops has pretty good battlefield control and domination over most of this area. I mean, I've got like a handful of Aid Warriors and Long Spears and stuff over here. Cousin Horsemen continuing to chase off the Poison Wind Globes. Super important at this point to make sure that they don't come back and get any amount of fire onto my troops. But uh, we'll see. It's definitely anyone's game at this point, although I'm not feeling great about my chances. Oops, in a pretty nice position here. That uh, Comet looks very impressive. Definitely hits mostly summoned Clan Rats. So, I mean, ability for ability, I guess that's fine. But uh, we'll see. We shall see. The problem is, the longer that this goes on, Gorich is just going to keep healing. I don't think the Packmaster's ability needs him to be in melee. Okay, no, it does need him to be in melee, which I think he can be if he's chasing routing units. But Gorich still has quite a bit of healing cap space left. And uh, I'm going to have to primarily use ranged damage in order to deal with him, I think. Because, I mean, none of my units can really fight him in melee at this point, right? So... Uh, let's see what we can do here if my Iron Hail Gunners are able to get a bead on him and, and mow him down in, in a hurry. But it's definitely a big if. These uh, Peasant Long Spears having leadership issues to those Rat Ogres getting charged out. Don't get their Bracing bonus. The uh, Peasant Horsemen also arguably a little bit over chasing some of those units in the back. Probably should be heading back to start rear charging some of these units and supporting. Um, fire of... Oh yeah, man, the Packmaster just eating a ton of shots there from the Iron Hail Gunners. That's what I was hoping to happen to Gorich once he comes into range, but just, you know, protect with the, the spears here. Anything that comes into range of the Iron Hails, I'm going to try and just mow down. But uh, Rat Ogres here, actually dodging the shots fairly well. Don't really take much DPS at all. They're kind of out at the extreme end of the range anyway. Another cheeky summon Clan Rat as well, and that's another problem. I mean... More summons and more healing means that this balance of power is just going to continue to tilt against me. And despite me cleaning up some units in the back, might be able to get that Grand Cannon back online. I think there's only one more artillery piece, but the damage is going to be fairly negligible anyway. Koops charges in with everything all at the same time. I mean, I say everything. Rat Ogres, Gorich, and the Packmaster all at the same time. And of course, well, only Peasant Longspears. And oh man, there's the... Uh, 
little vortex there. Yeah, didn't like one shot either of these units. Again, he wasn't like in a full true blob surround, but another rod of corruption from uh, good old Skrulk boy there, and then 2v1 Gorich, actually 3v1. All three of the Skaven characters coming after the Shin Gun Lord as soon as she lands. It's definitely a, a smart play. Looks like another plague gonna be unleashed as well. Skrulk is patiently saving a lot of his magic until the late game so he can just finish this off and there's no way now of me winning this. It's uh, gonna be a, a victory for Koops, a very close one at the end of the day, but you know, despite me focusing some value on Gorich, which arguably I should not have, um, he still manages to survive, and I do really like the Packmaster Gorich combination potentially. I think that needs more investigation. Uh, with Caster Lords, I mean, Skaven have really strong Caster Lords in general, whether it be uh, Skrulk being a relatively small target, but also pretty potent for cheap cost. We've got the Bell Lords, who are just overall very good at battlefield control. We've got great buffs, great magic as well, AoE damage. Um, I mean, you could also take Ikiklaw if you don't want to have access to summons. Lore Ruin is very strong, and of course his Doom Wheel, although it is expensive, is quite good as well. Can be very strong in some situations, so... Um, I mean... Yeah, Caster Lords plus this hero combination. I'd be curious to get your guys' thoughts as Gorich gives us a nice pose there at the end. Uh, very interesting stuff. I mean, again, I'm no Cathay expert, and I wouldn't say that I played this perfectly... Definitely made some targeting priority mistakes in not shooting the uh, Avalanche Mortars as a priority target with my Grand Cannon. Still ended up getting 2,000 damage value, though, so I mean that in and of itself was fairly cost-effective. The uh, Sky Junk somehow didn't pay for itself despite using all of its ammunition. A lot of that is due to this just being all kind of crappy, cheap uh, garbage infantry. There's not really a lot of actual good targets for them to shoot at, I guess. Um, yeah, even the Jade Lancers, too. 233 kills, less than 800 value. Don't even pay for themselves. The Jade Warriors, despite them, again, initially winning against Skaven Slaves, you would expect them to, but then in the late phases, just kind of getting ground down, and even though the Globes just barely pay for themselves, I mean, they really don't need to do much to pay for themselves, so even in a battle where I would say I, I feel like I limited them fairly well, they still are cost-effective. And uh, the Rat Ogres also contributing nicely, even if they don't end up paying for themselves. Gorich himself doesn't actually deal all that much damage. It's more just the terror, I think, of his presence. And, uh, you know, the fact that in the late game I didn't have anything which could actually kill him. The Avalanche Mortars end up just barely paying for themselves. It's a little bit odd, actually. I don't know where a lot of this damage value came from. Somehow, somehow, this Skaven Slave got 25 kills and 600 value. I guess this is the one that probably dealt the majority of the damage to the cannon, if I had to guess, but uh, it's weird that army damage value-wise, like, it seems that my values are a little bit inflated compared to his. Maybe that's just due to the healing, but a very interesting one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Have you tried Gorich out since Immortal Empires with the new percentage-based healing? Do you think he's better? Do you think he's still an absolute meme? Am I just insane? Or is this Skaven build something that could potentially work, not only in this matchup, but perhaps in other matchups as well? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.